Three garbage collectors discover a wallet that transforms their lives in an instant. Hi friends, welcome back with new amazing video from Rolling Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to recap a 2014 crime and thriller film titled Trash. Spoiler warning, watch out and take care. Joss Angelo, a middle-aged man, is the protagonist of Trash. He was spotted visiting the burial of his daughter, Pia Angelo, at a cemetery. He went home after arranging the flowers. He put a photo, a key, and other valuables in a red wallet when he came home. Shortly later, his flat was surrounded by cops. The cops pursued him and shot him in the leg until he was cornered at the end of the apartment balcony, which faced the highway. He dumped his red wallet on the road not long after that. The crimson wallet landed on a passing rubbish truck. The garbage truck drove all the way to the city's outskirts to dump in a slum. Following the unloading of the garbage truck, a large number of scavenger children arrived to sort the newly delivered trash. Raphael was a member of the scavengers. He appeared to be carrying a large plastic bag and removing rubbish. He was surprised to discover a red wallet that Joss had thrown out earlier. Several dollars and other goods were in the red wallet. He slid the wallet into his jeans pocket right away. Raphael double-checked the red wallet he had discovered earlier in the break before handing over some cash to his companion, Gardo. Raphael discovers a lottery animal drawing, a key, and other stuff in addition to money. Joss, who had been apprehended by the cops, was being tortured in a dark room with his hands tied. He had cuts and bleeding all over his body and face. Joss was questioned about the contents of the red wallet he had discarded. He, on the other hand, stayed deafeningly silent. He was eventually slain by a police officer. Raphael and Gardo were seen plunging into the river to bathe at the garbage dump back in the slums. The officers were seen walking along the riverbank where Raphael and Gardo were swimming and bathing, accompanied by Frederico, a middle-aged male police officer. He came across Gardo while wandering. Gardo was perplexed and inquired as to why there were so many cops around. Frederico claimed that he was on the lookout for a misplaced wallet that had crucial evidence. If anyone found the wallet, Frederico offered 1,000 Brazilian reals. He then requested them to make an introduction. Gardo and his comrade Rafael approached the chief of police right away and introduced themselves. Rafael, on the other hand, refused since he believed the wallet contained something far more precious, so the cops agreed to go down to the trash and offer a monetary prize. Raphael reasoned that the longer the wallet was missing, the better the chances were of getting a prize. They meet Gabriel, also known as Rato, a lonely boy who lives in the sewers, as they enter the sewers. Raphael enlists Rato's assistance in deciphering information from his wallet. Raphael shook his head and said the three of them took a train to the city the next day. They then proceed to walk down a tunnel beneath the ground. Unfortunately, a bully in charge of the neighborhood stymied their plans. The bully demanded money so they could continue on their way through the neighborhood. Rato gave up his necklace because he didn't have any money. They were eventually permitted to proceed. They were soon at the far end of the corridor. The hallway turned out to be a route to the train station. Raphael's key in the crimson wallet, Rato assumed, was the key to one of the station's lockers. When they wanted to approach the locker, however, they observed two police officers patrolling. Gardo took the initiative and snatched a backpack from a woman strolling through the railway station to distract the officers. The two police officers then pursued him as he fled the train station's changing room. Raphael and Rato could quickly inspect the mysterious key and see if it matched the locker. They were fortunate enough to locate and open a suitable locker. There was merely a mail envelope in the locker, it turned out. When they were about to flee, they discovered that the bully they'd encountered in the underground passage was after him and attempting to steal the envelope. Raphael and Rato rode a carriage that was about to start moving as quickly as they could. They were able to flee the bully's pursuit and meet up with Gardo in a train carriage. Gardo reads the address of the letter's recipient when they were riding in the train carrier on the way home. The envelope was addressed to Joss Clemente, a male inmate currently serving a sentence at Cova Prison. Raphael opened the envelope after he returned home. He comes upon pictures of Joss Angelo and his daughter. 
a row of secret digits is scribbled behind the images. The three of them sneaked into the house of Father Juilliard, an old priest who lived in the slum, the next day, intrigued by Just Clemente's name printed on the letter. Rato's in charge of distracting Father Juilliard and his daughter Olivia by inviting them to convene in the dining room when they arrive at Father Juilliard's residence. Meanwhile, Raphael and Gardo borrowed Father Juilliard's study computer to search the Internet for Jos Clemente's profile. On Google, they discovered that Jos Clemente was formerly a well-known lawyer who was later imprisoned for unknown reasons. The information was then printed on the printer machine by Gardo and they took off. The rubbish dump was visited by Frederico, the police officer, one day. He was still intrigued about Jos Angelo's red wallet's whereabouts, so he assigned the scavengers to locate it. Frederico became distrustful of the two children after that. They planned to contact Father Juilliard the next day about the information they'd discovered regarding Jos Clemente that evening. Unfortunately, Raphael had been kidnapped by the police the night before they met Father Juilliard. When Gardo and Rato learned of his friend's kidnapping, they quickly went to Father Juilliard's house and informed him. Several police cars were seen stopping at a different location on the corner of the street at midnight. Raphael's brought out of the police car in question there. Raphael's head was repeatedly slammed into an automobile. Raphael, on the other hand, was still mute. Frederico became enraged and wrapped his arms and feet over Raphael's head. It was then shoved into the back of a police cruiser. One of Frederico's guys drove the car erratically, causing Raphael to trip. Father Juilliard and Gardo went to one of the police stations to record a case of a missing child while hunting for information on Raphael's whereabouts. When they arrived at the police station, however, the officer on duty was unaware of Raphael's arrest because no one called Raphael was listed in the police custody registry at the time. Returning to Raphael, he was ultimately moved to Frederico's automobile after being tossed around by a police car that was being driven erratically. Frederico questions Raphael again in the car, this time regarding the red wallet's location. Raphael is placed in the trunk of the car, and the car is driven recklessly once more. Due to the fact that he's tough to work with, Raphael staggered back till the automobile came to a halt. Frederico abandoned Raphael at a deserted intersection. After that, he told his soldiers to shoot him and flee. Frederico's men had been preparing to shoot Raphael in the head with their guns after Frederico had left, but for some reason the cops couldn't bring themselves to murder Raphael. The cops eventually gave up and left him on the road alone. Raphael, who was dying and covered with injuries, was discovered by the residents in the afternoon. Olivia returns home as night falls and is taken aback to find a wounded Raphael, accompanied by Gardo and Rato. Raphael was recently beaten by the cops, and Rato says why he's seeking justice. He remembers the cop mentioning a man named Santos. Rato explained that he was familiar with Santos's name after hearing it. Santos, he explained, was a filthy, selfish politician running for mayor. Santos's home is near the shore, which Rato's aware of. After that, they devised a plan to seek justice. When they met, Gardo conveyed the last message to Jos Angelo, the letter's owner, who was missing his uncle, Jos Clemente. Jos also explained that the person who imprisoned his uncle will be apprehended soon and that Santos's fight against corruption would continue. The letter went on to say that if he received his communication, it meant his nephew had passed away. Jos Clemente, his uncle, was overcome with emotion when he received Gardo's message. Rato inquired of the gardener as to why Santos's home had so many security guards. The gardener then informed him that his employer had lately taken things from his residence. Jos Angelo, his boss's confidant, had just taken 10 million reals and other valuables from his boss's home. The gardener recounted the theft's timeline by going back in time. Santos and numerous officials met at this time to discuss his goal to becoming mayor via bribing officials. Santos then instructed his confidant, Jos Angelo, to conceal the bribe money and other essential documents in a hidden chamber. The refrigerator cable in the kitchen was then disconnected that night, and the refrigerator was smashed the next day. As long as the Bible, stolen by the jail guards, was with him, 
Jos Clemente stated that he could unlock the secret number code. The warden agreed to hand back Jos Clemente's Bible if the Gardo paid him 1,000 reals as he was ready to leave the prison. Olivia questioned the three guys about why they would do something that put their lives in jeopardy when they returned home from prison. Then they said that they were doing it to find out the truth. He gave the order to search and destroy Raphael's home. Frederico finds the wallet he's been looking for in Olivia's room, but it's empty. Olivia was apprehended by the cops. The slums were burned down by the police not long after. After that, he planned to go to the prison warden and request Jos Clemente's Bible. They were perplexed, though, because they lacked the 1,000 reals required to pay the ransom. Rato witnessed the fire victims fleeing to the church the next day, and Father Juilliard was busy caring for the residents. When the jail warden handed over his Bible, it revealed that the warden was aware of Gardo's plot. Gardo eluded the prison officers by tossing the Bible to Raphael and passing it on to Rato. They were successful in fleeing. They were discovered hiding in an empty apartment. They try to figure out what the string of numbers in Jos Angelo's letter means. The number code corresponds to the Bible of the jail warden. They were able to solve the challenge and write the solution on the wall at long last. Gardo, who was hungry, went to a party not far from where they were hiding in the hopes of obtaining food. Frederico attempted to dial the number after noticing the row of numbers on the wall where the three youngsters were hidden. It turned out to be a cemetery's telephone number. Raphael also attempted to call the number they'd cracked earlier from a payphone. The identical number was later discovered to be associated with a funeral home. Raphael discovers the final clue in the crimson wallet, which has a little calendar with the number 17 circled in June. The graves were investigated one by one, with the date written on each one. Finally, Raphael discovered Pia Angelo's grave, which was number 17 in block 6. Raphael hastened to phone his buddies after realizing Pia Angelo hadn't died. Unfortunately, Frederico discovered his pals and instructed Raphael to destroy the contents of the tomb. The grave was then deconstructed and the chest within was forced open. When Frederico called to notify Santos about the discovery of the money, Pia Angelo pulled a concrete pillar from above and dropped it squarely on Frederico's head, followed by three young boys attacking him. The three of them, along with Pia Angelo, then dashed from the cemetery with three enormous plastic bags stuffed with cash. They eventually return to their landfill hovels. Rato leaves a document containing the identities of the corrupt authorities who bribed Santos, as well as the money he stole from Father Juilliard earlier. The money was then put out on a hill for the settlement citizens to take. They leased a car and drove away from the scene. Olivia, who had previously been arrested by the police, came home not long after. She displayed an SD card holding recordings of children recounting their police chase and beatings. Olivia then used the Internet to share the recording. Olivia compiled a list of Santos's bribe recipients on the Internet. Pia Angelo sits in a beach cafe at the end of the story on a lovely beach in Brazil. She was watching a television program about Santos's arrest for bribes. He was also arrested by police officials who assisted him. Rafael and his buddy's video has also become a worldwide sensation. They lived happily ever after when the truth was ultimately exposed. We hope you enjoyed our video from today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications of new and interesting videos.